Hey, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new week of the Cabral Concept. So happy to have you here with me today on this Mindset and Motivation Monday. I wouldn't start the week anyway else, and I'm excited to share with you a brand new topic. I may have alluded to what I do in the past in terms of my anchors during the day. If you haven't listened to that podcast, we will link up my anchors, my three anchors that I use throughout the day. Our all show notes and takeaways will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2208. stephencabral.com forward slash 2208. All right, let's get into today's show. And today's show is all about the five alarms I set each day and also why I set them. So a lot of people probably think it's strange, no doubt about it, but hopefully by the end of the show, I will have convinced you, I will have at least swayed you maybe in some way to create one more alarm per day. Because as you know, most people have one alarm and that's it. The alarm that they dread the most. That is the AM waking alarm where they wish, especially during the winter time, they had maybe another hour or two hours to sleep. But alas, when the alarm goes off, you either hit the snooze or, you know, you you know, you you make that cold walk out of your bed to turn off the alarm. Here's the thing. Again, I've talked about this before. Never hit the snooze. Never hit the snooze. That's not what today's podcast is all about. But if you really want to mess with your circadian rhythm and your hormones and your neurotransmitters, you'll hit the snooze and go back to sleep. Don't do that. Set it for whatever time the latest that you can wake up is, if that's how you want to do it, and great. If not, I would definitely create a morning routine. I've talked about that before. We'll link up one of those podcasts as well. But today, I want to take you through why I believe that your AM waking alarm is the least important and should be the least important alarm that you set. In an ideal world, you never set one at all. All right, let's get into the today's show. Well, The most important alarm that you do set, and I set, again, this is for me. So the most important alarm that I set each and every day, and all of these are set, by the way, on my iPhone. That's it, except for one. I'll talk about that in a moment. All right. So I have an alarm that goes off every single night at 9 p.m. That 9 p.m. alarm is actually how I start my next day. So at 9 p.m. at night, I am already starting my next day. And let me explain. I'm a big believer in having energy in life. I'm a big believer in being happy in life. I'm a big believer in having ambition and drive to want to do things in life. I've had all of the opposite of those. I've been unhappy. I've had no energy. I had Addison's disease. I had POTS. I had uh, myalgic encephalomyelitis. I know what it's like to have no energy at all, no ambition, no drive. So what I am unwilling to do is to trade all of the little things that people do at night, stay up late, you know, um, till midnight or 1 a.m. because you want to watch something, whatever it might be. I'm not willing to trade energy and vitality and happiness and ambition and drive for staying up like I used to late at night. So for me, my next day, which is all of the things that I want to accomplish in with my family and my work, all of that happens starting at 9 p.m. the night before. And here's how that happens. At 9 p.m., my alarm goes off. That alarm is to tell me it's time to start wrapping everything up, winding down, and get ready to get into bed. Because you're waking up tomorrow between 5.30 a.m. and 6. So if you want to stay up till 10.30 tonight, you now only get seven hours of sleep. For me, my body, it likes seven and a half to eight. On the weekends, it likes eight and a half. So Monday through Friday, I make sure that I'm getting into bed somewhere. I mean, I'd love to get in bed at 930, no doubt about it. But my nightly routine is, okay, let's say my wife and I, we're on the couch, we're relaxing, uh, we're either reading, talking, or watching uh, one of our favorite TV shows. But it's hard to find great TV shows. Like once you watch a whole episode, it's like, oh, what else do you have to watch? And nobody else has anything else to watch. So, you know, you decide maybe you watch something, maybe you don't. But that all is going to be done by like 9, 10, 9, 15. I have to walk my dog. We need to make sure that everything's ready for our girls in school the next morning. Get ready for bed. Get into bed. Probably somewhere around 9.45 p.m. at night. That's probably average for me. And now it used to be much, much later. But I make sure that every night, no matter what, I'm in bed by 10. Okay. So why is that important? 
Because the next alarm, so basically the first alarm is this. It starts the night before. Well, don't, don't all of a sudden look up and it's 10 p.m. at night. Then you don't get the energy and the sleep that you need, right? Because sleep is energy so, and it's repair. So that's why I do it. I don't like to sleep. I mean, I don't. I'd say this all the time. My wife thinks I'm crazy. My wife enjoys sleep. I don't really enjoy sleep. I prefer never to sleep. I've, always, I've talked about that in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, and people, some people are on my side and some people know I love to sleep. I, I only sleep because it's a necessity. And I need a little bit more sleep probably than the average individual. Uh, and that's because I, well, I certainly push my body pretty hard, but I don't have that like robust kapha body type that can deal with, you know, six and a half, seven hours of sleep. I really need eight hours of sleep for sure. So I like to, I like to basically be asleep from like 945 to 545 in the morning. And that leads me then to my second alarm. My second alarm is actually not an alarm at all. It's a wake light. Many of you have heard me talk about my beloved wake light before. It is probably about five feet away from my bed. It plugs into the wall. It's not Wi-Fi. It's just a Philips wake light that plugs in. It's on my resource page, stephencabral.com forward slash resources. I got rid of the hatch light. It was too much tech. It was too much Wi-Fi. I want no Wi-Fi in the bedroom. I want just a plug-in light that I can dim so I can't see it at all. That's it. The wake light lights, it lights up at a very, very low level at 5.30 a.m. Because you basically, you set your alarm for six. That's what I mind for. I have to get up by six. And then a half hour before, it starts to light up very slowly. And it gets brighter each minute for one minute. So you basically wake up by the sunlight like you should, right? But you know, in wintertime, sun's not up at six o'clock, 5.30. So I wake up slowly. If my body was already ready to get up, which oftentimes it is, oftentimes I'm up at 5.15, 5.20 because my body knows, yeah, well, this is your wake time. You're good. You're rested. You're, it's time to go. Um, and then uh, let's say I had a hard workout the day before. My body's a little bit more tired. So I might actually sleep until like 5.50 and then I'm like, oh, then I wake up, right? Because now my body's ready to get up. And then if I ever I'm really tired. Well, then birds start to chirp in my room because that's what the alarm is. Instead of a you know air raid siren that's going off in my ear, sparking my cortisol and adrenaline, uh, instead it's just birds that start to get progressively louder. And that's how I wake up. So it's much more peaceful. That's the best way. So that, that's a great wake light. Again, all my resources are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. There's over 100 different companies that I think are doing great things. And I like to support great companies. So that's it. It's kind of like the anti-alarm. I wake up by light. And then if not, birds start chirping in my ear until I get up. And that's very, very rare. Like once a month, honestly, that, that the, I would actually get till six. And then on the weekends, I don't set an alarm at all. Like there's no alarm. So typically I just wake up on my own. I just wake up right around 520 to 540. So, and I talk about getting up within the same half hour every single day. So on the weekends, I don't sleep past 630. I ever, like, it's just, it doesn't really happen. You know, there's, there's other reasons for that. I have a dog that needs to go outside because, you know, he's got the bladder of a, uh, maybe a large pea. That's about it, you know, or a large kidney bean. Uh, that's about it. But, you know, <laughs> but he's a good dog. And so we do those things for him. So the next alarm is this. It's at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. The next alarm goes off my phone. You can put it on vibrate if you're at work. If you're at your desk in your own little cave like I am in my lab, that's what I do. 11 a.m. The alarm goes off. What is it? It's for lunch. Doesn't mean eat lunch. It means get ready for lunch. A lot of people's alarms are always things have to happen at that second. I get it. That creates a lot of stress. Mine's 30 minutes before. Why? Well, within the next few minutes, I'm going to finish up whatever I'm doing. I can snooze in on my phone because it's not like I'm waking up. And then what do I do? Well, I start to then get my lunch ready. My lunch takes 20 minutes to heat up in the oven, right? 25 minutes. So if I want it at 1130, which I do, right? Because I'm staying pretty regimented, okay? My breakfast, somewhere around eight, okay? Lunch, somewhere around 1130, 12. It's always within that half hour. I want to make sure that I have it then. So that's it. So it's kind of like, again, it's an alarm, but it's to really prep me for the next hour. And I say that because it's not just lunch. Lunch for me is one of my anchors during the day. It's like, okay, you just worked for four hours, like intensely. So now let's cool it off for a bit. Let's just relax, relax for a bit. Uh, listen to a funny comedy video, read a book, go for a walk. These are all things that I often do simultaneously. I'll put on a YouTube of a video and I won't watch it. I'll just literally walk and it'll be something funny or I'll put on binaural beats and I'll just go for a walk. 
that's probably, well, that's, that's a lot of the time. It really is. And then I would say once a week, and that's probably all it is, is once a week I go out for lunch. And that's probably like an Aussie bowl or something like that. And so that's once a week, then I would get that walk in. Uh, again, I get my walks in at lunch, but I typically no longer walk to a food place. And that's because of the, the pandemic. The pandemic has really changed my lunch routine. I used to always go out for lunch. And I would always go to a... Uh, in Boston, there's Life Alive, there's Dig In, there's Sweet Greens, there's Whole Foods. I've got lots of great options for a nice plant-based lunch. So, but now I, I just make my own lunch. That's it. And so I keep it pretty simple. Uh, or I'll go out maybe once a week, and that's that's part of my walk. And then of course I have my reading, or I have research. And I've been doing mainly research. Um, again, I'm still reading a book to two books a week minimum, uh, but it's a lot less than I used to. And most of it is because. There's not a lot that's interesting in me as much anymore. It's, it's really not. So I'm just doing a ton of research. And the last year has really consumed me in terms of longevity research. And so that's when I would do a lot of my research on sirtuins and uh, DNA and RNA fragments and mitochondrial health and uh, mTOR, you know, all, all these different things that I enjoy reading about and researching. And, and also, what did Ayurveda say about these things? Not calling it mitochondria, but what do they talk about in helping to rejuvenate the body, the rasanas it was often called, and looking at things like chaiwan prash and what wouldn't chaiwan prash would possibly help with the rejuvenation. Okay, let's start to go deeper. And so I would just, I use that as my thinking time and fun time. And then, okay, 1230, right back at it, back to work. And my next alarm then is going to go off at 3.30 p.m. Why is it going to go off at 3.30? 3.30 p.m., Right around 3.30 to 4, I have the end of my meetings for the day. So my meetings are ending between 3.30 and 4. So that alarm will get snoozed if needed until the end of those meetings. And then what it does is it enables me to say, okay, we're transitioning now. We just did another hard four hours or so of work, three and a half, four hours. At 4.30 is your workout, okay? Okay. So four o'clock by four, if it's a weight training day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I am doing a second smoothie for the day. And if you follow me on Instagram, if I remember, <laughs> which I try to, but uh, social media is not a second language for me. It's, you know, it's a little bit more challenging, or I should say it is a second language, I guess. Uh, not my primary speak. I don't think to go on there and, and do that, but I try to because I, I, I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy sharing and I enjoy seeing what other people are doing. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing a smoothie. And a second smoothie because I found that my workouts are much better when I'm doing a smoothie. And it's it's very simple. It's it's two different types of fruit. It's water, sometimes three different types of fruit, but the frozen banana is kind of like a stable smoothie base. And I do a half of that. And then I'll typically put in like one of my favorites is mango. And uh, I'll put in maybe like some dragon fruit or I'll put in uh, sometimes blueberries again. I'll, I'll just do, sometimes I'll do strawberries. Somebody just do different things. And then I put in my daily nutritional support powder and, uh, and it's just water. It's very, very simple. And that allows me for something easy to digest. So there's really no fat in that smoothie if people are wondering. And that's because in, a, in another uh, hour and a half, I'll be eating dinner. This is liquid, super easy to digest. It's going to be digested even faster, really, with my workout. And my body's going to use that glucose, which helps me to recover faster uh, for an anaerobic workout. Again, it might not be the right thing for you, but that's just the method behind the madness. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, which is my cardio days, and then also sauna sweat days, is um, electro an electrolyte drink. And it's just very straightforward. I don't like to recommend electrolyte drinks um, right out of the gates. Um, I'm typically just doing alkalizing vitamin C. It's not complicated. It's extra vitamin C. Um, and it's uh, better to use, uh, like, well, I don't want to get too into the health, but uh, I wouldn't do it directly before a weight workout. Uh, but for cardio, it's no problem at all because there's not a lot of tissue breakdown. Uh, I typically just use alkalizing vitamin C in the morning, uh, but I do really enjoy that drink. And that's just an electrolyte drink. It's, uh, well, it's vitamin C plus uh, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So very simple, very straightforward. If you're someone that wants the sodium as well, what do you do? You just add a little Redmond's red salt and now you've got your sodium chloride. Very, very simple, very straightforward. And you can make it your own. You could squeeze some lime in it, whatever, whatever you want to do. Uh, add some daily fruit and vegetable blend. Uh, really simple, really straightforward. But I don't need 
all, I don't need extra glucose. I'm not doing, I don't have a lot of muscle tissue breakdown on those days. Of course, I'm repairing from the day before. Uh, and I want to say super light, right? So my run days, I'm just drinking this fluid, the alkalizing vitamin C. Um, and again, I might do a half scoop in the morning, half scoop uh, in the afternoon. And, um, and then my sauna. And so again, that's going to be great for my sauna. So that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. And then I have one more alarm for the day before obviously the evening. And that's at 515 at night. I'm hoping that that alarm goes off and I need to turn it off when I'm already at home. My goal is to be home before 5.15 p.m. That has gotten much earlier over the years. I will be honest with you. Really until recently, I would get home probably closer to 6, 6.30. And when I was before like 2017, 16, I was getting home closer to 7. And then before we had kids, oh man, it'd be closer to like nine o'clock at night, right? So it's just, it's different seasons or phases of life. I've talked about that before. And right now it's just, my daughters are seven and nine years old. It's extremely important to me to have dinner with them and be home before dinner with them because now they're getting to grades where they have more homework. And so I want to come home and I say, Hey, you know, obviously how was everybody's day? Check in with them, give them a hug, give them a kiss, pick them up, you know, do all those sorts of things, pet my dog. And then uh, I'm saying, okay, um, does, you know, one of my daughters have homework? And if she does, great. I'm sitting down with her. We're doing homework together. And, uh, and that'll be that. Uh, or I'll help my wife with dinner. She doesn't need my help, but I'll try to do my best to set the table, put out water, whatever we need. Uh, if my dog needs to get taken out for a walk, you take him out for a walk. And then if nobody needs anything from me, and as my wife says, that I'm walking around with my hands in my pockets, and I'm typically then just making annoying dad jokes, and uh, they wish that I hadn't come home soon. But that is that is that is my life right now, and I and we're having a lot of fun, and I, I do enjoy it. I have to I have to say, you know, as as I don't think obviously uh, like many people, and, and people probably have seen the John Hopkins reviews and a lot of other studies that there's a lot of psychological stress and damage uh, caused during the pandemic. Again, you could say there's pros and cons to lockdowns or whatever. That's not the argument I'm making. Everybody have, everybody has their own truth and own reality. And, and, and um, I honestly support that because again, like who am I to say you're incorrect? I don't believe you're incorrect. So what I'm saying is though, um, there are some silver linings. And for me, it was getting home earlier. That's just the bottom line. It was seeing my family more, traveling less. And a lot of people have said that, but it's the truth. And I travel way less now and I'm home earlier and I very much enjoy it. And so now, you know, if I need to check in a little later, then I'll check in a little later with people at work. But really, no, I'm, I'm, I'm home, I'm present, and uh, we have a lot of fun. And if you've listened to my Friday reviews, some of the different games we've been playing and, and all those different table topics and that, and it's, it's been very much enjoyable. So those are really the five alarms I live by. And the second rebuttal will be people saying, well, that sounds way too regimented. It sounds like there's just like no spontaneity during your day. And I say to people, listen, if you're looking for spontaneity during your typical Monday through Friday, you know, why? Like, why, all, why do you need all the spontaneity during the day? If you want to have a great life, if you want to be happy, for the most part, the people I've seen who are really happy know what they want out of life. They're not, they're not just on an open uh, adventure looking for it. And they go about creating their life. And I'm telling you right now, setting alarms is just to make sure that you're on track with creating your own life. It's not for me to create your life or for me to even tell you how to create your life. I can help you with the health part of it, yes. But for you getting what you want out of life, okay, like, yeah, we could help you get well, but it's your life. Like you decide work and family and all these different things. And I understand sometimes people have to work two jobs and all sorts of things. I did that for many years. I worked from 530 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Listen, I get it. But that doesn't mean that has to be your whole life. So if you set these alarms and you get a little hour of downtime, well, now you're studying for a new job, a new certification, uh, you're doing moonlighting, whatever it might be. And, and that's temporary. It's a lot of work in the beginning, but then it leads to exactly what you want. So I just want to share with you again, there's no perfect day. I'm sharing with you my day, the alarms I set up. And the reason is it allows me then to have my perfect day. Because if I wasn't so regimented, I wouldn't be able to get 
12 hours or more of work done in a condensed workday. But now if I'm focused, I know exactly what I need to do. My calendar's also filled out. And the alarms actually, if you notice, my alarms are not telling me to work because I am someone that works, right? There's no doubt about it. So you might actually need something like, hey, get back to work. But for me, I could work all the time. I love my work. I love it. So for me, it's saying, my alarms say stay balanced, right? It's wake up relaxed. It's make your lunch. Don't work through lunch. Make your lunch. Take a walk. Read. Enjoy yourself. Then the four o'clock or so one, have a smoothie. Go exercise. The 515, better be home. Have to see family. Family is the most important. Make sure you get your time in. And the weekends, there's no alarms. So that's your spontaneity, right? That's the time all family, all the time. And uh, that's at least what works for me. Again, I'm not telling you how to live your life. What I'd like to do is share with you, though, some of the things that have worked for me and other people in order to create the life that you've been looking for. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. I appreciate you. Any other podcast links and takeaways will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2208. Have an amazing day.